All right, great. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Next up, we have Dr. Danielle Califano from BioRad, and the talk title is ZE5 Flow Cytometer, Extreme Versatility, a Customer Perspective. Great. Thank you, Tina, for the introduction. Um, I also want to thank all of the organizers for putting on this great webinar series for us this week. So today I'm going to talk to you, uh, as the title implies, about the extremely versatile Z5 flow cytometer. The Z5 is really a flow cytometer unlike any other. It has a unique combination of uh, innovative features, um, including an integrated sample loader, fast and powerful electronics, and a high velocity flow cell that provides our users with the necessary speed and sensitivity and unparalleled flexibility to meet a diverse range of research needs. Um, we believe that uh, these diverse capabilities of the Z5 have really led uh, to the development of many successful partnerships with a rapidly growing customer base in biotech, pharma, as well as in academic labs. Many institutions have purchased multiple systems and have actually adopted it as their primary research instrument. Um, we believe the success of the Z5 in both academia and biopharma is largely due to its multifunctional capabilities. We often focused in, in seminars such as this on the abilities of Z5 as a high throughput screening tool. And the, although it does excel in this arena, um, we also fail to highlight the fact that the Z5 is really multifunctional by design, and it has uh, several innovative features that allow it to be utilized across many different fields of scientific discovery. So for today's talk, I want to cover um, four different customer applications uh, that have utilized the Z5 to improve their data quality and enhance productivity. So to do this, I'm going to be sharing with you some exciting data that is brought to you by our users and also highlight how the Z5's technology and design features uh, played an important role in making their research possible. So let's start by discussing the Z5's high color capabilities. Here I'm showing you a 23 color um, immunophenotyping panel of human PBMCs that was generated in collaboration with our users at Massachusetts General Hospital and analyzed using FCS Express, uh, BioRed's new partner for data analysis. As you can see, using this panel, uh, we are able to clearly discriminate between several distinct subsets of immune cells including T, B, and myeloid cells, CD4 and CD8 T cells, as well as multiple T cell subsets, including the activated T cells, uh, PD-1 positive exhausted T cells, as well as naive memory and effector T cells. In addition, using this panel, we observe great resolution of NK cells, monocytes, dendritic cells, and NK T cells, and their subpopulations. Multiple B cell subsets were also easily resolved with this panel. Um, and what this data clearly demonstrates is the Z5's ability to identify over 30 populations and subpopulations of immune cells with a single tube. Um, and in addition, maintaining great resolution and separation of all the investigated populations, even when we're evaluating low frequency events. So the Z5 uh, makes the acquisition of high color data like this simple and reproducible for our users with several useful tools. Uh, one is our built-in spectral viewer and fluorophore selector tool with up to five lasers and 30 detectors. The fluorophore selector tool makes sure that choosing the appropriate detector for your experiment is never a hassle. 
Um, this window also is, includes a built-in spectral viewer that can be used as a panel design aid. I also want to mention that this same multi-laser spectral viewer is available on the antibodies, the BioRad antibodies website and can be used to design panels before getting to the instrument. The C5 software also includes an easy to use auto compensation tool um, that will allow users to handle spillover calculations at the instrument with ease and confidence. Um, the Z5 is also equipped with high quality lasers and high performance PMTs that provides exceptional sensitivity and resolution across all detectors. And additional features like our liquid cooled lasers and integrated beam shaping optics offer optical stability for consistent performance and reproducible data. So resolution and sensitivity are not only important for high color um, analysis, but they're also important for improving the detection of low frequency populations such as stem cell progenitors. To further demonstrate the ZE5's excellent ability to resolve even the most rare and dim populations, I'm going to walk you through a side population analysis conducted by Karen Helm at the Colorado um, Cancer Center. So side population analysis, um, if you're unaware, is a popular method for identifying stem cell progenitors in the bone marrow. These primitive stem cells are identified by their ability to flux a fluorescent dye at a rate that is greater than the main cell population. However, um, as you can see that the, this type of analysis requires the acquisition of a rare and dim population that can be quite difficult to resolve, uh, making accurate identification of this population um, difficult. Um, on the left, you see data generated using a custo uh, competitor's instrument comparing verapamil treated versus non-treated samples. Um, verapamil is a calcium channel blocker that blocks the efflux of the fluorescent dye and is uh, primarily used as a negative control in this assay. In the untreated sample, you can observe uh, a dim tail extending from the larger, brighter stained population of cells. However, uh, you can see that the separation from that main population is minimal, and uh, this reduces the ability of the user to precisely identify those populations. Uh, when you compare that to the analysis done on the Z5, you see a noticeable improvement in the resolution of this side population, uh, resulting in more confidence in the data overall. Um, the Z5's ability to improve population resolution, especially when analyzing rare events, is largely due to the high pressure at the flow cell. Um, one of the biggest challenges when analyzing rare populations by flow cytometry is getting enough data in a reasonable amount of time. The efficient acquisition uh, will normally require fast sample flow rate. But as we all know, as that flow rate goes up, your sample core will widen, and this can introduce errors, causing poor CV and spreading in your populations, which will ultimately result in reduced population resolution. With a sheath pressure of 10 PSI in the flow cell, the Z5 can maintain a tight sample core stream, even at high speeds, ensuring data quality over a large range of acquisition speeds. So here I'm showing an example of stained human PBMCs run at two different flow rates, one at 0.5 microliters per second and another at 2.5 microliters per second. As you can see, the frequency remains consistent at both high and low flow rates, and there's no visible spreading in the population as the flow rate increases. Other than data resolution, another concern when you're sampling low frequency populations is the risk of data loss or aborts. Again, the Z5 solved this concern with its incredibly fast and powerful electronics that, that provides superior data resolution without electronic aborts. 
To demonstrate this fact, Karen Helm at the University of Colorado uh, tested the Z5 along with several other cytometers to determine how fast they can really go before starting to have data loss. Um, she ran serially diluted beads at increasing concentrations and compared the expected count shown on the x-axis to the measured count shown on the y-axis. As you can see, uh, as the event rate increased, the Z5 measured count matched the expected count all the way up to 100,000 events per second. In contrast, all of the other cytometers tested started to fall off around 20,000 events per second. And although you may practically never reach these types of acquisition speeds with your actual samples, um, it's a comfort to know that there's no risk of losing precious data due to an electronic abort. Um, so in addition to that, the, the Z5's fast low noise electronics are also crucial for evaluating small particles. And I wanna demonstrate this by sharing with you a unique and interesting story of our users using the Z5 to identify species of phytoplankton while uh, traveling at sea. So um, to evaluate collected seawater samples in real time, the researchers at the Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences loaded the Z5 onto a transportable seagoing laboratory for a two week research excursion. And this vessel traveled from Rhode Island to the Gulf of Maine, um, all the way to the Sargasso Sea. Um, the system's compact design uh, with small benchtop footprint and low power demand made it an ideal instrument for shipboard analysis of their marine samples, and it eliminated the need for the research samples to be stored and analyzed at a later date. BioRed even uh, sent a specialist to join the lab on their two-week excursion to assist the users in running their samples. Um, you may recognize Matt Goff, pictured in that top right uh, image, who worked at BioRed at the time. Okay, and here's some of the, the data that was collected on that trip. Um, samples that were collected from surface seawater were evaluated based on their size and the fluorescence of their innate chlorophyll. In the first panel, I'm showing data um, collected from a competitor instrument where they used the 48 word scatter detector to determine size, shown on the x-axis, and identified populations of cyanobacteria uh, based on their varying signal and test the varying signal intensities of their innate chlorophyll, shown on the y-axis. As you may notice, the chlorochlorococcus genus is nearly impossible to resolve from the noise and debris using this instrument. Um, as the genus is very small, it's roughly 0.6 micrometer in size and also has very dim fluorescence, uh, making it difficult to detect. However, when you uh, look at the data collected on the Z5, you see a vast improvement in the ability to discriminate this bacteria from the noise and allowed the users to confidently identify this population. When further evaluating these samples using the small particle detector on the Z5, uh, shown on the right panel, you can observe an even greater resolution of all populations detected. There were several key design features of the Z5 that were crucial for improving this type of analysis for our users. First, this work utilized our small particle detector to better resolve the populations of cyanobacteria. This is a highly sensitive forward scatter PMT off the 405 nanometer laser. With low noise electronics, this detector effectively resolves populations down to, the size, down to sizes in the nanometer range. We also have an inline sheath filter that comes as a standard 0 0.2 uh, micron pore size to filter debris from the sheath. Or for better filtration, we can use a smaller pore size, which can also improve resolution of very small particles. Another great feature available on the Z5 software uh, for small particle analysis is the live threshold plot. Uh, this plot shows all of the data that the electronics are detecting and it will allow the user to visually set the threshold with, uh, with so there's no um, risk of setting the threshold incorrectly. Um, you have absolute confidence in setting the threshold. 
Raising or lowering that threshold allows you to exclude any unwanted noise or debris from the acquisition, which will also improve the resolution of small particle analysis. Um, users have the ability to set uh, the threshold as a, with a single or a dual trigger using either fluorescent signal or scatter. So to further demonstrate the capabilities of the Z5 small particle detector, um, another user from Dartmouth University evaluated the Z5's ability to resolve different size particle beads. On the left, uh, you are already seeing great resolution of submicron particles, even when we're just using the regular Ford scatter detector. However, when you move to the next panel, you can see that the resolution greatly improves when, this, when uh, the data is analyzed using the small particle detector. And this part is able to resolve particles down to 0.2 micrometers in size. By adding, a fluorescent for, by adding fluorescence as a trigger, um, shown on the right, we are able to detect particles as small as 20 nanometers in size. So I want to end today's talk uh, by discussing some data using the Z5 as a robust high throughput screening platform for drug discovery. Um, so this is a study that was conducted at the Scripps Research Institute and they utilized the Z5 to identify small molecule compounds that can reverse T cell exhaustion. Um, so in humans, persistent viral infections can reduce T cell activity by upregulating ligands for inhibitory receptors. Um, so to reverse T cell exhaustion or by reversing this reduced activity, um, small molecules can offer uh, an attractive therapeutic alternative to some antibody-based therapies. And so the investigation of these molecules to reinstate T cell function is of great interest. So shown here is the general workflow of the study um, that was used to screen and validate hits for molecules that target exhausted T cells. So um, by using interferon gamma YFP transgenic mice, the authors uh, first established a virus infection with LCMV. Um, the study used YFP, uh, which is linked to interferon gamma expression as a readout of T cell effector activity. 15 days following the initial infection, cells from the infected mice were re-stimulated in 384 well plates with LCMV peptides. Uh, addition of small molecule compounds were also added to test for whether they could re resurrect T cell effector responses. Cells were then screened for YFP expression using the Z5 with YFP expression indicating the reversal of T cell exhaustion. The top hits were then validated for virus specificity and dose response um, and, antibody, and antibodies against checkpoint inhibitors, which are uh, known to reinstate effector function in exhausted T cells, were used as a positive control. So um, the small molecule compounds uh, that reverse T cell exhaustion were identified through the screening of the reframe li drug library. So this is a drug library that is composed of just about 12,000 compounds. And this contains both US uh, FDA approved and registered drugs, as well as new investigational drugs. And so um, I'm not gonna go through all the steps of the screening process. I just wanna highlight the fact that using the Z5's high throughput screening capability, uh, this study was able to rapidly screen, identify, and validate 19 quality hits after only two rounds of screening. So um, as I said, this study utilized the Z5's high throughput technology, um, which allowed for that rapid acquisition um, of their screens. Uh, it takes less than an hour to complete an entire 384 well plate while using the Z5. In addition, um, using the fully integrated sample loader, the samples could be acquired directly from those 384 well cell culture plates, meaning that the users lost no time transferring samples to different plate formats or tubes. Um, the Z5 flexible sample loader also supports a variety of um, sample input formats, including all types of 96 and 384 well plates, as well as 5 mil and micro centrifuge tubes. Um, and this is done without any hardware changes. Uh, 
In addition, the inline bubble detector permits this worry-free auto sampling that you will want in high throughput flow by allowing samples to run dry and then automatically proceeding to the next well. Um, uh, customizable sample handling features also added flexibility for the high through application needs. Uh, pro programmable probe wash times ensure minimal carryover for any type, for any sample type. Adjustable agitation speeds will prevent your sample from settling. And the integrated temperature control keeps your cells at optimal conditions throughout the entire run. And for labs that really need to scale up their experiments with maximal productivity, the Z5 also offers an agnostic API that is able to interface with any robotic automation system. Optional external fluidic upgrades also increase productivity by expanding operation time from eight to 22 hours. Um, similar to the onboard tanks, the external, external fluidics are monitored in real time and are hot swappable. swappable. So you don't need to sacrifice any features of, on the Z5 when upgrading your fluidics. Alternatively, you have the option to directly connect your Z5 to your in-house DI system for unlimited sheath supply, enabling uninterrupted operation. Um, so to uh, wrap up, I covered several different user applications in this talk, and uh, I believe that the data showed that the Z5 was valuable in improving both the data quality and productivity in all cases. Design features such as the high velocity flow cell, um, super fast electronics, as well as the small particle detector enabled the acquisition of rare events and small particles and allowed our users to obtain data quickly without sacrificing their data quality. The Z5's high throughput technology also saves time and increases productivity by accelerating the drug discovery process and with robotic work cell integration, the Z5 stays hard at work at all times. So uh, in conclusion, by combining high color capabilities with excellent speed, sensitivity, and resolution, the Z5 really is an all-in-one flow cytometry solution. And um, just before I end, I just want to thank our, our generous users for providing us with their data. And I also want to thank uh, the BioRed R&D and global marketing um, teams for their support in building this presentation. And I want to thank all of you. Okay. Thank you so much, Danielle, for a really, really wonderful talk. Um, we really appreciate it. And I encourage everyone to utilize that Q&A function. Um, and I also... Love that little uh, dot plot heart. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I, I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, so when you're doing and you're carrying out the, the instrument comparison, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious of what methods you use to standardize across instruments before you make comparisons. So do you ever do any um, bead-based comparisons and how do, you, how do you really standardize across that you can truly compare? Um, I, I, you know, I would imagine so. I can't say for certain. Um, unfortunately, I, I was not, uh, I did not, I guess, ask that question when I received the data from our customers. Um, so, uh, again, this isn't like data that was generated internally. It was kind of uh, called from our user base. Um, I would have to, and I don't want to give um, incorrect information out to everybody, so uh, I, I can always get back to you on that if I ask the, the people who actually conducted the experiments. Okay, um, and then the, one of the other things is, um, you know, so what we uh, see often at our facility is people are looking to do fret assays, so for example, they might want to look at um, GFP, YFP, and be able to kind of um, customize the filters a bit for very specific assays. So I'm curious as to what, uh, how easy that is um, on the ZE5 and, and, you know, kind of walk us through the process of, of what users or uh, SRL staff would need to do for, for applications like that. Um, yeah, you can definitely get customized filters. Um, 
uh, on the Z5. Uh, you, um, they're all, you have access to the panel and you can uh, customize filters and, and swap them out um, for what any application needs that you want. Um, I do believe that, uh, and I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe that there is a group actually um, using the Z5 currently uh, to evaluate um, for fret analysis. Um, so it's, it is completely possible, yes. Okay, great. Um, and then I, I saw that you um, had, had mentioned about the robotics unit, which was great for people that are doing a lot of high throughput screening. Um, have you ever heard of any facilities that have um, paired the, um, the ZE5 or uh, th that the instrumentation with um, potentially some robotic units that automatically uh, carry out the staining? So it's a completely uh, closed off system where it does the staining and then it also does the um, transfer of the plates and the washes and everything over to the ZE5? Yes, definitely. I think that that's a, a very common utilization. So you, um, there's like two different options. Uh, I think really that you could have with the robotic integration, there's some turnkey solutions that it's basically just a uh, load. You have like a hotel with your plates and it's loading the Z5 for you after you've done the um, upstream cell processing. Um, but there are um, uh, several uh, people who have their robotics integrated to a, a complete workflow um, from staining to analysis. Okay, great. Um, and then for some of the sm uh, smaller particle analysis that, that people are looking to do on instruments and it's becoming more common, like say with extracellular vesicles or, or um, you know, uh, people are looking at um, submicron particles, um, just to remind us on, on what the limit of resolution is there and then uh, what particles are used to, um, to determine what that limit of resolution is. Is it, is it beads? Is it virus? Is it, uh, what type of beads are they? Uh, all of that. Yeah, so I believe um, with just using the forward scatter, uh, small, uh, just using the um, small particle detector um, with a, uh, without a fluorescent trigger, uh, the resolution is, is roughly 0 0.2 uh, micrometers in size. Um, and then with fluorescence as a trigger, I think, it, like as I showed, it goes down to um, 0 0.3 micron in size, or 0 point, sorry, like 20 nanometers in size. Oh, numbers. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and I think, yes, that was done um, in, with beads. Okay, and do you know if they were polystyrene beads or um, organosilica or, or what type I'm, of beads? Oh, yes, I believe they were polystyrene. Okay, great. All right, well, I think um, those are all the questions that we have um, for now. That was a really wonderful talk. Thank you so much, Danielle. And um, we do have one or two minutes left over before our next um, speaker, so we can go over to Tina for some general information. And thank you again, Danielle. Thank you.